Yeah, welcome people who are using Yapinext and people who are going to use Yapinext. So uh, today I'm going to talk about user interfaces. I am a product engineer at Frappe, and I think from day one I used to dabble in uh, UI. And over the years I have uh, I've formed an affinity towards building great products. And I'm also trying some things in design. So yeah, this is what I'm going to talk about. So according to me, these are three major parts how user interfaces are built. So you have pages. Pages can be your home page, dashboard page, settings page. And these pages are built using components like button, link, card. And then we have data like users, to do settings which use the data to render the whole page. So I want to focus on the data because more or less these two uh, uh, parts are solved by things like client side routers like view router. So I'm, I personally use view and we have thousands of component libraries. Maybe one is being built right now. Uh, <coughs> so but data is not I mean, there is no, no really uh, standard way or best practices for handling client-side data because there are few problems. So things like uh, users, so this uh, users list comes from user doc type. And to do might come from to do doc type and settings from system setting. And to handle data like this, so for in the view world, we have UX, and I don't like the API. And it has other problems, like it is a state management library, but it is not really built to handle async data fetching. And that is where the problem lies. And this is not problem only with UX. We have so many state man management libraries, Redux, uh, Flux, all of that. So what? Uh, we are really dealing with when we are writing uh, client side code is state management and specifically server state management and 90% of the data management code that you write uh, is this and this server state is remotely stored so it can't be accessed uh, synchronously you have to fetch it asynchronously and it whatever changes you make on the client side it needs to be fetched on the uh, it needs to be synced on the server and this is a pseudo code of how you might fetch a list of to dos. And this is a real co uh, view code where you have a data part where you describe you have to dos, and then we create a new to do, you set it to null, and then you write a function to fetch the to dos, and then you also write a function to create this to do. And this is how it might uh, look like. So the problem with this is this blank loading state. This is not very ideal. So these are the problems with it. You don't, so this, uh, the example that I showed has some few seconds of latency. And so we don't, we don't have feedback. We don't have a loading state. We don't have an, we don't have error handling. And the code is very imperative. And when you're writing declarative code, why write imperative code to manage your data? So to fix that, you need to add all these lines, error handling code and try catch statements. And then you might get something like this, but you had to write all of that code. So we can do better. And I'll demonstrate that. Let me know if the font size is fine. On the back, is this better? OK, so this is the code that, that I just showed. You have all this code. But uh, let me switch to this. 
look at all the code where we didn't have to write. This is all the code. The UI code remains the same, and we get the same behavior. But I'm not satisfied with this. We can do better. So, so let me just uh, quickly show you how this works. We defined our resources key. This is a special key that is added, and I have uh, used Frappe UI component, uh, Frappe UI library, which is a view plugin. And here you can define your uh, server state and the method and parameters to fetch that uh, state. And just by declaring this, you get loading state, data, error handling, all of that. So let me demonstrate error handling. So if I try enough times, I get an error like this. So this is a basic example, and this is much better. But we can do better because this is a uh, this is a list view, right? You the next thing you need in a, in a list view is pagination and all of that. So for that, so we have the same thing, but now I have removed the method declaration and I am just defining what my list is, and the list is a to-do, and with the fields. And by doing that, we get similar uh, API, but we get uh, an insert, a delete, and update. So we get the same thing. And if I add Yeah. So we got that. We can do better than this. Let me show. So when you click on the list, and I've added this uh, artificial delay so that you can see the delay and get frustrated. So yeah, the next example that I have is document resource. And we saw a resource type list. I have another component, which has, uh, it has type document. And you just need to pass it doc type and a name. Now, what you can do is, Did you notice the list also updated? And I did not write any, any code for that. All of that is handled. So if I close this, so this will also get updated. Uh, I mentioned pagination. Let me also show that. So you also get pagination for free. The way this works is you just call resources.todo.next, so it will fetch the next page. And you also have a variable which will tell you whether you have a next page or not. So based on that, you can render the load more uh, button. So this is how this works. So yeah. but. Uh, I, st I still see a problem here. Can you see it? Uh, let me, yeah. So I still see a problem, the loading indicator. I hate loading indicators. So let's do better. And the only change I did is add a cache key. 
and no loading indicators. So this is where we are right now. Uh, I'm still working on this, but I think this is really cool, and you should check this out. And yeah, all of it uh, just updates magically. So uh, while building all of these features, uh, I realized that you really have two type of uh, data in your UI. One is list. So in this case, you might have a user to-do list, which is filtered by some user. And this is a specific user to-do list. And then you might have a separate list of to-dos uh, with these columns. And then you'll have documents. And let's say, uh, so what, whatever I showed in the demo, I was updating a field, right? So let's say I update the description field. Frabe UI knows that we have these lists with these uh, keys. So it will know right uh, where to update those documents. So we have all the, so, this is not new. We have React query and those uh, SWR that uh, Nikhil mentioned. But we are Frappe. We know metadata. We can do much more than that. So that is where the power of metadata comes. Then you might ask, uh, isn't this global variables? But this is managed global variables. You don't have to think about it. So Nikhil mentioned uh, the strategy. So. This uh, whole showing the cached data first and then loading it in the background is a HTTP caching strategy. And this is, uh, this is a real caching header that you can pass in HTTP requests. But the strategy is now being used in UI client uh, libraries. And you get good uh, developer experience. And uh, you don't have to think about a global state anymore. So the right, I mean, the conventional way to handle state is have a global store and pick things from there. But the colored parts are individual components, and each component will fetch whatever data it needs. And the data management layer will handle everything else. You might also ask, does, this, does it scale? So all of these products and many more uh, are using uh, Frappe UI. And uh, if you didn't already know, Frappe UI is open source. And I only talked about the data management part because that was really interesting for me. But we have all these components. So someone asked about component library. Here it is. And this is the API to use it. So this is only for view, but uh, I had a chat with Nikhil, and we'll think about something that is more generic. But uh, yeah, so these are the things that I'm also planning to work on. First and foremost is documentation, because we have a lot of cool stuff, but none of it is documented. And uh, real-time mode, more helper APIs. Maybe think about other backend connectors, not sure, and accessible UI components. All of this uh, was obviously not my original idea. It was inspired by many awesome projects like View Camera, React Query, which is now uh, Tan Stack Query, and Network Tab of Linear.app. So when I uh, discovered Linear App, uh, it was very fast. And I was very curious how, how it is loading so fast. And I was trying to inspect its Network Tab, and I didn't find any requests. So it is caching everything in IndexedDB. So that is where I got the idea of caching data in IndexedDB. So very cool. Uh, so so uh, looking at apps like Linear, Notion, Figma, that is where my inspiration comes from. I want to build apps like that. Uh, and I'm not building uh, Frappe UI in, uh, uh, in isolation. I am working on a product, which is called Game Plan. 
And this is how it looks. So I'll show a quick demo. This is game plan. And this is a work communication tool that we use at Frappe. Uh, we have the sidebar. And uh, so we have teams, projects, and we have basically discussions. Uh, yeah. So this is, so I'm building this as my main project and Frappe UI is uh, getting built. And also Frappe UI is uh, being used with uh, in other projects. So it is getting, it is generic. So yeah, take a look at it. And game plan is open source. So yeah, just open source it uh, five minutes ago. So yeah. I think, uh, yeah, uh, last call to action is let's build the next generation of Frappe apps. So thanks.